Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jenna Lee and I am so happy you are here. I am passionate about restoring home family and spirit through tried and true homemaking skills. You have probably noticed we are not in our normal scenery. Normally I am homemaking in our 100 year old little farmhouse in Missouri. Today we are in a charming cabin up in the snowy mountains of Wyoming. I am going to share with you all the wonderful, delicious, cozy meals that we ate in the cabin and hopefully give you some good winter meal ideas. We started the first day at the cabin by taking the kids sledding and I mostly hung out with the baby at the top of the hill and a little bit in the car, keeping her nice and warm. It's so nice these days with a snowmobile. Jared just goes and picks up the kids at the bottom of the hill and they have it so good. I don't know if they know how good they have it. Back in the day, the good old days, we used to have to walk up the hills and burn those calories and earn our hot cocoa that way. But after sledding, we all came back for some hot cocoa and then I got started on making an early dinner. Tonight we are having steaks out on the grill and roasted butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. I know grilled meat and vegetables sounds kind of like a summer meal, but I do like to use the grill when weather permits and I prefer cooking my steaks on an open fire. If you know our history, you know that we spent most of our married lives here in Wyoming. In fact, moving to Missouri was never part of the plan, and I would love to share with you guys that whole story, but not today. We did live here for one whole year while we were house hunting. We were looking for that perfect piece of property that we had always dreamed of raising our family on, and the lack of finding a property for the right price did lead us to Missouri. But coming back to the cabin always feels like home. Our kids ask to come here all the time. We miss the mountain air. We miss the snow sports. So it's good to be back. But because this cabin isn't lived in all the time, the ingredients are a little bit scarce up here. So I'm just using what I can find. I'm seasoning these vegetables with a little bit of oil and salt and pepper, a little bit of onion powder. I think I found some Cajun seasoning in there. And then I'm going to put these roasted vegetables in the oven to roast for about 20, 30 minutes until they're nice and tender at 425 degrees. And while they are roasting, we are going to prepare our steaks. On Christmas Eve, I brought our neighbors over some cookies. And in exchange for cookies, they gave us some of these beautiful steaks. Now, I don't know if that's a fair trade, but I'm totally good with it. I'm so grateful <laughs> for these delicious steaks. And we are eating good tonight on some farm fresh steaks from our neighbor's property. I'm seasoning them with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, some of this Japanese barbecue sauce that I found in the fridge, and also some pretty general steak seasoning. I think it's from Costco. and simple nutritious meals like this. This is really fast food from scratch at its best. Some fine steaks and seasonal winter veggies. I love switching up the veggies throughout the year depending on what's in season.
This is the cabin kitchen, guys. This little cabin is adorable. It is full of so much rustic character with beams and logs and raw cedar all over the place. My in-laws recently put up some of this track lighting, which is bringing so much light to the kitchen this winter. And it's so nice to cook in a nice bright kitchen after the sun goes down. I am tempted to put some sort of track lighting in the farmhouse, but we'll see. I am still thinking on it. The following morning, we got started with a really simple country breakfast, some bacon and potatoes. My husband likes to cook these country fried potatoes. He just puts the potatoes in the microwave for about a minute per potato. And then we fry them up on the stove in some reserved bacon grease or butter. This is the way that Jared's mom used to make breakfast potatoes. And it's the way that we make breakfast potatoes in our family just about every weekend. And so welcome to our breakfast table. This morning, we're having the classic Hardman potatoes, some bacon, toast, and eggs sunny side up. Just enough to power us up for some family fun today. We are actually headed over to the movie theater. We went and saw the movie Wonka with the family and it was really good and that's saying something I don't make it to the movie theater very often but I love this movie it was a great family show the kids enjoyed popcorn and afterwards we had a little bit of pizza that night before we went home it was a great night Family has come and joined us here at the cabin, and this is actually New Year's Eve. When it comes to celebrations and gathering, I love being in the kitchen, making delicious food. Feeding good food to my loved ones has to be one of my love languages because I love doing it. I am following a very simple cheesecake recipe and using a pie pan because that's what is here in the cabin and a 9 by 13 dish with water in it for the water bath. Cheesecake is one of those things that I don't actually make very often but it's delicious and I think it's a great celebration food. The next thing we are making is a mushroom artichoke dip. I was talking to my mom on the phone the other day and she told me she was making the dip for a Christmas party and that she makes this recipe every single year and every time she makes it all of her friends ask her for the recipe and it's always a huge success at any party she goes to. And so of course I asked her for the recipe. I can't believe she's been holding out on me this long. I'm just kidding, mom. I'm so glad you shared this recipe with me and I'm excited to try it out this New Year's Eve. It's really simple. I'm just sauteing some garlic and mushrooms in some butter. I've chopped up some artichoke hearts. I'm putting that all together and just adding one cup of mayo. I know that sounds like a lot of fat, but it's one cup of mayo and one cup of Parmesan cheese. And I always look for the good stuff over in the refrigerated area, trying to find some of that fresh Parmesan that doesn't have all that anti-caking preserves in it. So you just mix all of that up with some salt and pepper in it as well. Put it in a little eight by eight baking dish and put that in the oven at about 350 degrees for I believe it's 20 to 30 minutes, but I'll put that recipe down below. Next, I'm just whooping up some seven layer bars. Although I think technically I'm only using about five layers here, but it's pretty basic. It's just a graham cracker crust with graham crackers and butter on the bottom, 
layered with sweetened condensed milk, some semi-sweet chocolate chips, coconut, and I just saved a little bit of that sweetened condensed milk to drizzle on top. And then I put that in the oven at 350 degrees until it was golden on top. Next, I have a pork loin that I'm just kind of filleting a little bit here to um, make it flat. I'm going to fill this little pork loin up. And on a whim, I decided to fill it up with some of our mushroom artichoke dip that was still cooking. So I'm seasoning with some salt and pepper and taking a couple of scoops from this artichoke dip. Now you could definitely remake this filling by just sauteing some garlic and some mushrooms and mixing this all together with some Parmesan cheese and stuffing your loin with that filling. I'm rolling it up here. And then my plan is to roll it up into some bacon. I mean, really, can you go wrong with rolling a pork loin up in bacon? I think not. And I'm going to coat this pork loin with a little bit of Dijon mustard and some salt and pepper and wrap this baby up and put it in the oven and bake it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. And I always like to make sure to check it um, a little bit early on and check and see if those juices are coming out clear. Oh, and of course I'm gonna serve them up with some fried potatoes here on the side. Season those with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of onion powder. And that will give us some protein and ground our meal a little bit here with all of the goodies, the dips that we're gonna be having tonight. We are also gonna be serving up a little veggie tray and I think we're definitely going to need to make a salad to go with all this rich food. But don't you just love the holidays? Love all of the reasons to get together and to celebrate. Good food has a way of bringing people together. Honestly, mom, I was a little bit skeptical with the cup of mayo, but as usual, you were right. This dip was absolutely delicious. It's a keeper. Our cheesecake has been cooling in the fridge and everyone is just dying to try it. So I whipped up some strawberry filling to go with it. I cooked about two cups of frozen strawberries on the stove with about a cup of sugar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon juice, and that's gonna be great on top of our cheesecake. The pork loin and potatoes were a big success. And to be quite honest, the cheesecake was a little toasty on top and that can always be solved with some whipped cream to hide the toastiness and it was absolutely delicious. I'll make sure to add all the recipes down in the description box below. Isn't this canyon beautiful? There's some moose tracks out here and we saw some moose droppings. So we definitely don't want to run into a moose out here with their, with their babies. But this is such a beautiful hike. Look at this. My babies are at home with grandma and I am out for a hike with my sweetheart and sister-in-law. And I missed the mountains. It's nice to be back for a little bit. Look at this winter wonderland.
on this day, most of our party has gone skiing. And I chose to stay home with the baby and two little girls. Don't feel bad for me. I am quite content to stay home and to read a book, work on a project. In this case, start something delicious. Somebody's got to stay home and cook some nice hot soup for all of those tired cold skiers when they get home. I asked the little girls what they wanted to do today, and they made a full list of all the things that they wanted to do with me today. They want to have a little spa day. They want to play with the baby. They want to do a baking day. So we are going to go to the store and get some ingredients so that we can bake something this afternoon. But before we do that, I'm just getting some beef stock started here on this stove or I guess in the crock pot. I brought some beef bones with me from home. I picked up from the local butcher and I put them on a sheet pan and put them under the broiler with some onions and carrots, seasoned it with salt and pepper, and just put that under the broiler. I flipped them over on both sides until it was nice and brown and toasty and put that in the crock pot with some water to cook on high for the majority of the day. Here we are in the afternoon. We have fulfilled a lot of things on the girls' wish list, but now I am chopping onions and they are just making me weep. I've chopped about six sweet onions. I'm going to start out this French onion soup by sauteing some butter, a good amount of butter here. I think it's about a stick's worth. We're going to add our onions and some slices of garlic. Whenever I've chopped some onions, I always wash my cutting board and it seems to help with, with the weeping. If you can get that surface um, cleaned up as soon as possible. So the secret to a really good French onion soup is caramelizing the onions. Well, I guess I should first say a good beef stock that's why we made it from scratch. And number two, caramelizing the onions. So after you've added the onions and the garlic, put the lid on and let that sit for about five minutes and let those onions sweat. Then take the lid off, add some bay leaves, some salt and pepper. And then this is where the caramelizing comes in. Turn the stove down to low and hang around the kitchen for about an hour because you are going to be stirring this pot about every five to ten minutes. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to be baking up some cupcakes with these cute little girls. They were so excited to spend some quality time in the kitchen with me. After an hour of tending to these onions, look at that beautiful caramel color that they've taken on. All of the sugars in those sweet onions have turned nice and brown, and it's going to be a wonderful flavor. I'm adding three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and stirring that in. This is going to make our soup a little bit thick. I'm adding some non-alcoholic spirits to this that I found in the cupboard, but this recipe calls for a little bit of cooking wine to, to get all those caramely bits off the bottom of the pan. It's going to bring a great flavor. Then I'm going to add slowly some of this beef stock that we've made. Those black pieces in the stock are just some of those onion skins that burnt. But I also learned that some of those brown onion skins give beef stock a really nice brown look to it as well. Um, and I think it enhances the flavor as well. So now I'm just adding some rosemary instead of thyme. I just prefer the herb rosemary over thyme, but you could do thyme as well. It wouldn't be French onion soup without that crusty baguette on top. So I got this baguette from the store. I'm slicing it up. We're going to put it underneath the broiler just a little bit. Keep an eye on it so it's nice and toasty. 
All of the skiers are home. They're excited to tell me about their day and I'm just getting this soup put on the table for them. I'm adding the beef that was on that bone back into the soup. I added the toasty baguette to the soup and put a little bit of Monterey Jack on it and put it back under the broiler to melt the cheese, topped it with some parsley and served it to all of those tired and hungry skiers that have lots of stories to tell me about how their day went. I will link this recipe down in the show notes below, but I think it was a real hit. It sure hit the spot. We are wrapping up this wonderful stay at the cabin with one more day with our family and making a big family breakfast. I prepared my classic roll recipe that I make actually for dinner rolls. I've shared it with you guys during the holidays. I'll make sure to share it with you again in the show notes down below. But this time I'm using it to make some sweet rolls. I actually was going to make some cinnamon rolls, but there's no cinnamon here at the cabin. So I'm improvising with some brown sugar, some chopped pecans, and some milk chocolate chips. So it's going to be more of a pecan chocolate roll. You can see by all the little spectators that they are excited about these rolls too as they steal a morsel of chocolate or two. This is a crowded kitchen this morning as we are all pitching in to make one last big family breakfast. I love moments like this. Okay, I just had to record some of this family morning breakfast. What do we have over here, Jody? We've got pancakes. we've got pancakes. pancakes. Everybody loves pancakes. pancakes. The original recipe. Look at all these kids who are gathered around the kitchen. What do we have over here, Big Papa? We have some bacon on the table? and some what? potatoes that we always bacon. do. Bacon. We're about to put Jared's, the potatoes. Jared's in famous the so pot potatoes right here. These are kind of country fried potatoes that he does. You've seen these before already in today's video. We slept in this morning, didn't we, sweetie? That was very nice. What did you do yesterday? Went skiing. Went skiing. It was awesome. <laughs> Are you sore it today? It wasn't a lot of snow, but it still was fun. Oh, it was fun. It was fun. Are you sore? I'm very sore and tired. Well, I need to do it every day. Jared takes the boys better. skiing all the time and, well, actually all the kids, but just the boys yesterday. Right. Okay. Now do another one. Good job. Okay. Nice work, guys. Roscoe's, Roscoe's flipping the pancakes. Good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> After that big, crazy family breakfast, look at this quiet, clean kitchen. Coming in here to put the rolls into the oven. These pecan chocolate rolls are going to be more of a treat after everyone comes in from playing outside. And the dinner rolls are going to be great for sandwiches on the way home. Running away to the cabin has been like pressing the reset button for me. As a homemaker, it's nice to leave your environment for just a moment to get a fresh perspective. And although I do a lot of the same things here on vacation as I do at home, I still cook, I still clean, I still take care of my loved ones. I can find rest and I can find peace because rest is really a state of mind. Choosing to take a break from worrying about your mundane and responsibilities that you always worry about and taking moments to enjoy life. I hope that this was a moment of refresh for you and I look forward to seeing you for next week's video. Um, let's chat in the comments down below and I'll catch you next week. Love you lots.